Good afternoon and thank you, President Van Roquel, for this incredible honor. I admire your leadership on behalf of quality education for all children. Besides, I have a soft spot for teachers, so this President's Award is special. I am so sorry that I'm not able to accept the award in person. As you may have heard, there is a strong weather system developing on the East Coast that may make landfall in Massachusetts and I am needed here at home. But I want to take a moment, first of all, to acknowledge Paul Toner. I want you and your fellow NEA members to know how extraordinary it has been to be your partner these last eight years, Paul. You've been a fervent and effective advocate for your members, for organized labor in Massachusetts, and above all, for the profession of teaching. Everything good that has come in our schools has been on account of that partnership. I also want to say thank you to all the teachers and other NEA partners from Massachusetts who have flown all the way to Denver for this annual meeting and who have worked with us on issues from early education to higher education. You have helped make the Commonwealth better. I sit here before this camera, the incredibly proud governor of the nation's leading education state. Massachusetts is first in the nation in student achievement and has been for the last seven years. We are at or near the top in the world in math and science. We funded the public schools at the highest levels in our history, right through the economic downturn. We are slowly but surely moving toward universal early education. Our community colleges have expanded their mission to support our workforce training needs and built stronger partnerships with our vote tech schools and local businesses. And with the legislature's support, we have substantially increased funding for our public colleges and universities, putting the public back in public higher ed. Here's my point. We have done that and much more with labor at the table. We have the highest level of student achievement in America and one of the most highly unionized educational environments in America. We put the lie to the prevailing myth that you can't have accountability and achievement alongside a strong union. Of course, we have more work to do on reforms. The sign of any successful organization or system is continuous renewal and reform. But we have chosen to do reform with teachers rather than to teachers, and that, I am convinced, has made the difference. And I want to thank you all for that. I told you at the outset that I have a soft spot for teachers, but that's not a political point. It's a personal one. I grew up on the south side of Chicago in the 50s and 60s, most of that time on welfare. I lived there with my mother and sister and various other relatives in our grandparents' two-bedroom tenement. My mother, my sister, and I shared one of those bedrooms and a set of bunk beds, so you go from the top bunk to the bottom bunk to the floor every third night on the floor. Everything was broken. Broken sidewalks, broken playgrounds, broken lives. I went to big, overcrowded, under-resourced, sometimes violent public schools. I don't remember a time when I didn't love to read but it wasn't until I was 14 and a scholarship student at an independent school before I owned a book of my own. But even on the south side of Chicago, it was teachers who lifted me, teachers who encouraged me, teachers who taught me how to look up rather than down. In so many ways, I have lived the American dream. And I think it was teachers like Mrs. Quaintance in the sixth grade or Mr. Smith in the ninth grade or Mrs. Threet in the third grade, or Mrs. Weisenberg in the seventh grade, who showed me how to dream, how to imagine a different path for myself and my family, and how to reach for it. Their lessons and demands, their high expectations, their patience, their love prepared me, and also convinced me that a system of high standards and high stakes could enable every child to reach her or his potential. Investments in our schools of ideas, time, support, and also money, they matter because those investments unlock growth and opportunity for all of us. They make the American dream possible. So in addition to thanking you for that, I want to ask you to keep going. I know you feel like every failing is yours. Every critique is about you. I know the schools are asked to take up the slack today in ways that families and whole communities used to. And I know that you know that there is no going back. Still, I ask you not to give up on reform, not to give up on better policy, and not to give up on increased professionalism and accountability.
because America's children still need you. For all the strength of our student achievement in Massachusetts, we still have persistent achievement gaps. And the children stuck in those gaps are poor. They are children with special needs or children who speak English as a second language. It's an educational and economic problem to have an achievement gap at all. But to let it persist, that's a moral problem. Those are our children too, yours and mine. And each and every one of us has a stake in their American dream, just as so many teachers showed me the stake they had in mine. I got my break, but you and I know that there were lots of other kids on the south side of Chicago just like me, just as wide-eyed and hopeful, just as eager to learn, just as curious and ambitious, but who didn't get their break. They need us, our creativity and innovation, our determination and resilience, our fresh thinking, and our old-fashioned love. As your partner in that enduring work, it is a great honor for me to receive this recognition. I hope one day to be worthy of it. Thank you.